sister who died in 2010 when her son was murdered. The girls are still alive. Six months after that boy was murdered, was shot in the head, just getting out of his car. Six months afterwards, that same sister, son, was coming home from school, getting off the school bus in Hazel Chris, Illinois, and he, some man was chasing somebody, shooting a gun, and shot my nephew in the face. So my sister lost her older son the day after Christmas, and then six months later, her 17-year-old was crippled. This beautiful young man who was a basketball star at Hillcrest High School. Beautiful, magnificent creature. He laid up for two and a half years as an invalid because he, he it severed his spine and he, he couldn't even, he couldn't speak. He had, he had to uh, blow, he was called sip and blow. And then his thoughts and words were going through. I never really understood how. He died a year after, he, he, he was two years that way. And then he died. When my sister couldn't take it anymore, she had a heart attack and died. This violence you can hear from almost anybody African American. I mean, the fact that you could know two young men, two beautiful young men who were just taken away. I have had students who all they wanted to do was art. All they, I mean, they're, they were poetry, they were musicians, they're dancers, painters. The first thing they take away from children is art. The first thing they take away. You have a school system and, and there are kids who only go to school so they can get to their art class. And the first thing they take away, it's almost like a plan. I have seen children come back. They, they put the bad kids in the art room. That's where they, I mean, if I had 20 kids, they would, they would turn that classroom into 40 kids because they you go to the art class. That's where they put the kids. Now, how come I can have 40 kids in control and eight kids can't be in control in a math class? And I'm not down in math. Oh, I can't do it. I'm not down in math. I'm saying there is something intuitive to children and art. And if they are allowed to create, because it's not crippling, first off, if there's a, there's a way they can to, to scream all the things the change holding them. But there was a way they can break them through art. If they can sing, dance, paint, write, and you give them that escape, they wouldn't have the ex to, to escape into the streets and find people who are doing that. You, you work, we work against the violence. We work against our kids. They go to church and they see a painting, a pa art, a painting, and there's nobody black, nobody that looks like them in it, and that's heaven. That means, what does that say to a child? It says everything good is not you. I said, when I went to the Art Institute, and I was nine years old, I walked around the Art Institute with my father, and we're walking around, and I said, so um, when were we invented? And he said he didn't know what I meant then. I said, when were we invented? But I knew what I meant. I meant, where are, I mean, this, obviously is in chronological order. And so obviously at some time, people turned black. And I wanna go see when they turned black. I wanna see those paintings. And my father said, no, they, they, this, this is it. This, you know, we, we were always here. We were here first, we were the first people. And then I said, well, when I grow up, I'm gonna paint people, black people, all over the world. And that was a dream. And the Art Institute of Chicago gave me a chance to put that in big bold. They put that up for my exhibit so that kids could read that what had been my dream. And I, my, my drawings, paintings, books, no matter where, somewhere in the world, a rendition of art that I've done exists. Dreaming. Violence can be halted if you allow children to be children. 
don't turn a, a, a little black boy into a man when you're when white children are allowed to be children. The way you can do that is through art, through all of the arts. <laughs>